So I'm a teacher seven, Mr. Barry here. This is lesson number 12 of the computer literacy course. Now in the last three lessons, that is lesson number nine, 10, and 11, we've gone over Microsoft Excel and also Google Sheets. Now this is the last one that we'll actually be covering anything there for Google Sheets. We're gonna be creating a project that is project number 18, and then we'll be going into Google Forms. And after do Google Forms, we'll then go in and talk a little bit about what's a Chromebox, and then we'll have the examination there for lesson number 12. So, let's get right into the practice lesson. Review of Google Sheets and Google Forms. We have been learning the features and tools of Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets in lessons 9, 10, and 11. We have learned how to create spreadsheets with labels, tables, charts, formulas, word art, and merge cells all within Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel. Today we will create one more spreadsheet and then go on to learn about Google Forms. We will also go over a few mini lessons in class. So what we're going to do for the practice lesson here is we're going to start our Chrome browser or open up our Chromebook and log into our Google account. Number two, click on the apps icon found on the bookmarks bar or on the Google Apps icon found on a new tab as seen here. Number three, the app screen will load showing the apps that are installed on your account. Number four, click on the Google Drive icon that appears like this. Number five, the Google Drive will load as seen here. Number six, locate the projects folder and double click it to open it. Number seven, once it opens, you will see the projects that you have created in the past as seen here. Number eight, click on the new button. Number nine, a menu will pop down. Number 10, Click on the green Google Sheets icon as seen here. Number 11. If you're asked to create this document in a shared folder, then click on Create and Share. Number 12. The Google Sheets app will load. We're going to make a spreadsheet that compares different EVs and their ranges. 13. Give this spreadsheet the title. Project 18 Electric Cars and Their Ranges by typing in the new title and hitting the Enter key once. So your title will be this here, Project 18 Electric Cars and Their Ranges. You just click in there and key that in. 14. After naming the spreadsheet, the blank sheet will be visible as seen here with the title at the top. Number 15, take your mouse and highlight row number one from column A to column E. 16, now click on the merge command to merge these cells into one long cell. 17, click on the center command to center the text within this cell. That's done by clicking on this icon and then clicking on the center align icon as seen here. 18. The spreadsheet should now look like this row here. 19. Key in the words electric cars and their ranges as seen here. Step number 20. Click into cell A2 and type name and then hit the tab key once to jump to the next cell. Step number 21. Key in model year and then hit the tab key once to jump to the next cell. Step number 22. Key in range in miles and then hit the tab key once to jump to the next cell. Now range here means how far can the vehicle travel on just one charge. 23. Key in quickest recharge time in minutes and hit the tab key once to jump to the next cell. 
And a little side note there, quickest rain recharge time, basically different electric cars recharge at different voltages. So some can be recharged at over 440 volts DC, while others are limited to 240 volts AC. So there's a big difference in the uh, times. Step number 24, resize column D to make it wider. This may be done by right clicking on the letter D and selecting resize column as seen here. So you'll take your mouse, right click on the D that's representing column D and then this context menu will appear and then take your mouse and click once on resize column. 25. The resize column window will open. Select fit to data as seen here. After you click on fit to data, click on the OK button. 26. You should now notice that the D column is wider. 27. Key in this information into column A of your spreadsheet. So there you're going to have right below name, you have boat, which refers to the Chevy boat, the Fiat 500E, the IMEV, which refers to the Mitsubishi IMEV, the LEAF, which is referring to Nissan LEAF, and the Model 3, well that refers to the Tesla Model 3, and we're actually looking at the Model 3 long range. Step 28. Now key in the information into column B as seen here. So we have 2020, 2017, 2017, 2018, and then 2021. 29. Key in this information into column C of the spreadsheet. So now we have the ranges. And there's 259, 84, 62, 107 and 353. Step number 30. Now key in this information into column D of the spreadsheet. So this is now the quickest recharge time. So for the Volt it's 90, the Fiat 240, the IMEV is 15, the LEAF 30, Model 3 37. Step 31. After entering in the information, the spreadsheet should look just like this. So notice you have the name of the car, the model year of the car, range, and your quickest recharge times. 32. Highlight from A3 to D7 as seen here. And that's done by clicking within the cell A3 holding the mouse clicker down and then dragging all the way across and down to D7 that has the number 37 in it. Now we're going to learn how to sort our data. So step number 33, click on data from the top menu. Step 34, now click on sort range. A new window should open in front of your work, as seen here. 35. Under the Sort By heading, select Column C, as seen here. 36. Click on the Sort button after selecting the C column. 37. The data should now be resorted as shown here. So notice now you have the IMEV is the first one, and then the Fiat, and you have the Leaf, the Boat, and the Model 3. You have the years, 2017, 2017, 2018, 2020, and 2021, and then you have the range of miles, and that's what we sorted by. So the smallest one there is 62 miles, and the longest one is 353 miles. Step 38. Take your mouse and highlight from A2 to A7 as seen here. 39. 
use the keyboard shortcut Control C to copy the names. Step 40. Click within cell E2 as seen here. 41. Use the keyboard shortcut Control V to paste the names as seen here. 42. Highlight cells from C2 to C7. 43. Use the keyboard shortcut Control C to copy the ranges. 44. Click within cell F2 as seen here. 45. Use the keyboard shortcut Control V to paste the ranges. 46. Now highlight cells E2 to F7 and that's done by taking your mouse clicking out here in the white space of E2 and then dragging down and across to about right here in the middle of F7 and then letting go of the mouse clicker there and you'll notice that those cells should be highlighted. 47. Click on the insert chart icon or use the keyboard shortcut Alt I H to open the chart editor window. And it should now appear like this. 48. The, the chart should appear. Click within any blank cell of the spreadsheet, such as in F8, to unhighlight the chart. 49. Move the chart so that both the data and the chart are visible at the same time. You can move the chart by dragging the top portion of the chart to the location that you desire. 50. Resize the chart to make it easy to read as I have done here. So notice I have the data on one side and then I have the chart on the other side. And notice on the chart here we have the little iMeave with a range of only 62 miles. So it appears here. And you got your Fiat, the Leaf, the Bolt, and then the Model 3. So you can see as the years go by, the ranges increase dramatically. Congratulations, you have completed project number 18. We're now going to be jumping into Google Forms. Google Forms allows for the creation of polls, surveys, student test or collect information in an easy and streamlined way which can be used to create a spreadsheet. Number one, have the Google Chrome browser open or open a new tab. To start the Google form you may click on the apps icon found on the bookmarks bar. Three, the app screen will load showing the apps that are installed on your account. Four, click on the Google Drive icon as seen here. 5. The Google Drive will load as seen here. 6. Double click your projects folder to open up your projects. 7. Once it opens you will see the documents if you, that you have created in the past. 8. Click on the new button. 9. A menu will pop down. 10. Click on the more command. 11. Now click on the purple Google Forms icon. 12. If you are asked to create this document in a shared folder, then click on Create and Share. The Google Forms will now load in front of your work as seen here. 14. Give this form the name Project 19. Now this can be done by keying in the new name where it says Untitled Form, as you see I have done here. 15. You may click on the blue button that says Take a Tour to become better acquainted with Google Forms if you wish to. 16. After taking the short tour and giving the form a name, key in the following question title. Can 
Google Sheets open a Microsoft Excel workbook. So key that there. We're going to choose multiple choice as the option there. 18. Now click within the answer options and key in yes for the first option and no for the second option. 19. You may add a second question simply by clicking on the duplicate icon button, which actually does save you quite a bit of time. 20. Once you have the second question, you may change the question to Can Google Docs open a Microsoft Word document? 21. Now click on the Send button and key in my email address in the Send box there. Click on Send and you're all done. And that is it for forms. Now normally who use forms would be a teacher or perhaps you're in business and you're going to be using forms there. So um, this is just the introduction to Google Forms. Our next topic is Chrome boxes. A Chrome box is a personal computer running Google's Chrome OS operating system. The device is a desktop variant of the Chromebook laptop and connects to your home's Wi-Fi to receive the internet. They do not have a display built in but use your desktop monitor instead. Chromeboxes are meant to replace your desktop computer. And this is an example one here. Some advantages of Chromeboxes are that they are super fast, they never get a virus, and they use the Chrome OS, which is very secure and allows you to run any of the millions of the free apps that are found within the Chrome Web Store. They normally cost less than $200 and can be found from HP, Dell, Asus, as well as many other brands. We'll now begin the review questions for lesson numbers 10 through lesson number 12. So if you're doing this for credit and you're in my class, get a sheet of paper, write your name at the top. and then you will be turning those in to me or to your teacher. If you're doing this online, as we're doing it now through this COVID-19, um, you may email me the answers. And if you're taking this class for enrichment, you don't need to turn in your work. Number one, which Google app allows you to create spreadsheets? Question number two, which Google app allows you to create polls, surveys, and tests? Question number three, spreadsheets are made up of small rectangles which hold data and labels. These rectangles are called what? Question number four, please name this icon. Question number five, please name this icon. Question number six, please name this icon. Question number seven, please name this icon. Question number eight, please name this icon. Question number nine, please name this icon.
question number 10. Please name this icon. Question number 11. Please name this icon. Question number 12. Please write down one way to resize a column. Question number 13. Please write down one way to resize a row. Question number 14. Laptops that run the Chrome operating system are called what? Question number 15. According to the chapter, Chromebooks and Chromeboxes can run apps from where? Sixteen. Chromebooks and Chromeboxes connect to what to receive the internet? Question number seventeen. Do Chromebooks and Chromeboxes get viruses? Question number 18. Please name this icon. Question number 19. The keyboard shortcut Control C will do what? Question number 20. The keyboard shortcut Control V will do what? Question number 21. The keyboard shortcut Alt I H will do what? Question number 22. What is a Chromebox? Question number 23. Do Chromeboxes have Wi Fi? Question number 24. Do Chromeboxes have a built in display screen like Chromebooks? Question number 25. A Chromebox is meant to replace what? Hey, we've completed lesson number 12. If you like these types of videos, please do click on thumbs up, comment down below because I love to read your comments, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I just want to thank everyone there for being part of this course. And this course is actually brought to you live every Tuesday from 3.30 to um, 6.30. And that will be, uh, it's California time on Tuesdays. And what I do is I actually have a class there. And if you're interested in, in taking that class, just leave, simply leave a comment down below saying, hey, I want to be in. And then what I'll do is I will then send you the form where you can actually register for the free computer class. 
and get um, an email notification of when we have the free classes there on Tuesdays. Hey, thank you again and bye-bye. <music>